So our last storyteller for the evening, when I first heard this story, I heard it in a rehearsal, um, and I'm so happy that it made it to Top Shelf so that it could be shared with all of you tonight. It's such a funny story. Um, our final storyteller hails from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, though, <laughs> though his wife says he was sent from heaven. Aww, that's what he told me to say. Uh, Mike Bayreuther has been telling stories for about five years, but he also informed me that he has narcissistically been talking about himself for about the last 20. And um, this guy is so charming. Every time I see him on stage, he just uh, charms the audience. And he is the only man that I have ever seen that can rock a pair of red skinny jeans. So please welcome Mike Bayreuther. trip to Las Vegas and everyone decided to go to a strip club by everyone I mean Spencer and Andre Spencer and Andre are a couple guys my age but they're also hipsters so I don't know if they actually want to go to a strip club or if they want to go ironically <laughs> either way I'm in because I've never been to a strip club see I'm not that kind of guy for example, my bachelor party involved me and a couple of buddies um, staying in for the evening and playing a vigorous game of Risk. <laughs> However, I feel like I'm in Vegas. I need to go to a strip club and get a lap dance for the cultural experience. <laughs> but I'm a new husband and I want to be responsible, so I text my wife, Honey. <laughs> I'm in Vegas and all the other boys are going to a strip club. Can I go too? I wait. And then she texts me back. Yeah, baby, go see some titties. <laughs> like, I love you so much. So Spencer, Andre, and I, we all hop into a cab and we uh, head to the Spearmint Rhino, which is a weird name for a strip club. Um, I guess they have like a sister club, like Pe Peppermint Giraffe or something. I don't know how this works, but apparently like it costs 30 bucks to get in because apparently the Spearmint Rhino is one of the top five strip clubs in America. And as we walk in, we are like overwhelmed with just this tidal wave of big breasted women in bikinis. And one woman who's got this long black hair, she wraps her arm around me and she says, what are you doing here? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> She says, well, what do you want? And I go, uh, to go to the bar with these guys? And then she says, oh, you must be one of the faggots. Goodbye. <laughs> Apparently strippers are a lot like girls from my middle school. <laughs> Spencer, Andre, and I mosey over to the bar, and we start taking in the scene around us. And it's just this big, dark room, jam-packed with sketchy dudes, and there's women just dancing on stages and on tables, and to the left of me, there's a girl hanging and her from the ceiling. Her body is parallel to the ground, and her entire body is making the worm, and I am mesmerized. <laughs> Not just because she's topless, but the athleticism involved here. It's just like, whatever she's doing should be an Olympic sport, as far as I'm concerned. Um, a blonde stripper notices the looks on her faces and she comes over and she's like, you guys look scared. Are you scared? And Andre's like, no. And I'm like, we're terrified. <laughs> she's like, well, let me explain to you how this works. You can sit for free or you can get a lap dance for 20 per song or you can get a private dance for 60. And Andre's like, wait, wait, which one's free again? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that, thanks, okay. So Andre leads us on this like desperate search for a seat in a jam-packed strip club. And we are like getting no luck for like an hour. But then suddenly a seat pops up next to a stage and he like grabs it. And all of a sudden Spencer and I have nothing to do. So Spencer and I keep walking around and Spencer's got a little courage at this point. So he grabs the girls like, I'm gonna get a private dance. And they go off into a back room and all of a sudden I am very alone and scared. <laughs> 
this short little stripper comes over to me and she's like, how can I help you? And I'm like, I'm trying to get a lap dance. And she goes, okay, come with me. She grabs my hand and magically she finds an open spot on a bench and she sits me down. And then she says, is this your first time? And I'm like, uh-huh. And she goes, okay, time for some German engineering. And she pulls off her top. <laughs> Now I'm staring at these like big fake boobs and all I can think is European socialized medicine is phenomenal. <laughs> but despite having spent my night in a strip club, I still don't know what's involved in a lap dance. And so like all of a sudden she just like crawls on top of me and her boobs are just in my face. And I'm like, I'm here for the cultural experience. I'm here for the cultural experience. <laughs> This is not like the worst thing that's ever happened to me, I guess. <laughs> she starts giving me the idiot's guide of like how to get a lap dance. So she like takes my hand and she like puts it on her hip and then she turns around and she's like, I can't hear you, Mike. And I'm like, thank you, ma'am. I don't know. <laughs> So like after a couple minutes, the whole thing wraps up. I give her 25 bucks and she gives me a kiss on the cheek and it all feels strangely like adult and normal. So I like, I get up and I'm like, yeah, I did it. Good for me, okay. <laughs> and I head over to Spencer and Andre. I'm like, Spencer, how was that private dance? He's like, actually, when I got back there, they, uh, a bouncer showed up and made me buy $100 in drinks. He's like, I'm sorry, Spencer, that kind of sucks. But Andre, how's, how's the stage been? Kind of awesome, right? And as I say that, there's a woman on stage in front of Andre, and uh, she's lying on her back. And then she has her legs straight up in the air, and she's holding on to her red heels. And then she then proceeds to like make them slap on the stage, spread eagle. So it's like, clack, 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 clack. <laughs> and after this goes down, <laughs> Andre turns back and looks at me and he's like, I've seen things. <laughs> Spencer's like, I think we're ready to go. I'm like, ready to go? What are you guys talking about? I mean, I've only gotten like one lap dance. Like, I should at least get one more. I mean, just to get used to it. And they're like, okay. I'm like, cause I'm strip club guy now. Look what happened, yeah. So I head back in and there's like a stripper getting off the stage into like a larger gaggle of strippers and I like head over, I'm like, I'd like a lap dance. And then from the shadows comes the woman with dark hair who earlier in the evening had confused me for a homosexual. And she grabs me by the collar of my shirt. She goes, I'll give you a lap dance. <laughs> she takes me over to a bench. She sits me down. She tears off her top. She goes, that was first song. That is 20. You want more? It's 20 more. No, I don't want to be rude. So I'm like, oh, oh okay, um, go, go ahead. Now, she starts dancing, but not like the first stripper. She just kind of like sits down and leans back on me and starts making small talk. She's like, oh, you're from DC, that sounds nice. So I'm like trying to remember what my mentor stripper taught me. <laughs> so I like take my hand and I put it on her hip and then she slaps it away. I'm like, oh, now I feel like a huge creep. And then she says, no, I am double trouble, which I don't understand. <laughs> but also I grew up in a time where the only place you heard the term double trouble was when the bad guys showed up in the Pokemon cartoon. <laughs> Like, Jesse, James, do you want trouble? Make it double. Team Rocket! Um, long story short, like, I'm thinking about Pikachu while she's, like, licking her finger and wrapping it around her nipple, and none of this is sexy or fun. <laughs> I get up, I find Spencer and Andre, I'm like, let's, let's go home. We pile into a cab, and because we're pussy white guys, we start talking about our feelings. <laughs> 
I'm like, oh, I feel like so dirty and gross. And Spencer's like, oh, I got ripped off. And Andre's just staring out the window. <laughs> Something was lost tonight that he'll just never, ever get back. So we start like discussing the women in details and our cab driver is a lady and so she stops the cab at one point and is like, I'm really enjoying this conversation, guys. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. She's like, no, 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 seriously. You boys are the most sensitive gentlemen I have ever picked up on my trip. after one trip, because when I told my wife what was involved in a lap dance, she's like, you're never doing that again. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everyone.